Open for Views. Hey, and welcome to Open for Views. Today we're going to talk about the absolutely magical world of solo tabletop RPGs. Yes, I know, I can feel that. I can feel you saying through the camera right now, I don't want to do that. I want to play with a group of people. Or I don't want to play solo RPGs. That sounds terrible. It's not. It's awesome. And you will understand. Hopefully you will understand <laughs> after this video. Uh, solo RPGs give the player a really clear opportunity to create a narrative, create a story, create a setting, and really expand upon it. And it also gives the player the opportunity to create lots of twists and turns, most of which were not planned. But that's part of the fun, right? Uh, typically what you need, you don't need, like, say I've got chalkboards over here, but this is for display purposes only. <laughs> uh, paper, pencil, graph paper is very beneficial. Also, you're going to need three, six, D6s and a d20. This is the system that I use. Uh, there's tons of solo systems. And solo systems are built around the core of something called a, an oracle. Oracles tend to be a, uh, more often than not, a system that emulates a uh, game master, or a dungeon master, referee, whatever you want to call it. And it's by asking questions, and then you roll your dice to see what the reply is. Like you'd ask your, you know, typically you'd ask your, you know, dungeon master, you know, is the town we're in welcoming us? No. <laughs> you know, so you would know to uh, kind of work with that when you're in that town. So this, in these in these oracle systems, I know the, the two I can think of off the top of my head are Mythic, and then, and then I think the other one is, I think it's called 1D10. If that's wrong, I apologize. But 1D10 is, uh, from what I remember, a system where you use a single D10 and you roll it, you ask the question and you roll, and the maximum number represents like an absolute positive and the, the bottom number represents a negative. And then all the rest in between are different colors of yes or no. And so that's how you would ask your questions. You would, you know, you'd say, you know, you know, are we in the jungle? You know, you roll your dice, yes, no. And then you could kind of figure, okay, we're not necessarily, maybe we're in the swamp, you know. But uh, I've created my own system because it's that easy to do. And I'm not going to go into the exact specifics of my system because I'm working on something. And, but I'll show you how a lot of it works. So, as I said, you have your D6s. And I'm going to show you how easy it is with a, essentially an Oracle table system, how to make a, a setting scenario uh, right from the get-go. So we're going to take our D6s and roll them. All right, so it is dawn, and it's, it's cold. It's cold outside, and it, we're on a hillside. And it's, it's domestic, it's not foreign, it's, it's something that's familiar to the player. And it's, it's, moderately, it's moderately crowded, but as a character, we are suspected of something. Whether we're suspected of being a foreigner in this quote-unquote domestic area, or if we are suspected of a crime that's been committed, or someone else has committed a crime, and... They look like us. You know, they've got wanted posters hanging around town, and they look like your player. So this is a really fast way to get a, a, a basic scenario going. So as I said, it's the morning, it's dawn, the weather is cold, uh, it, we're in the hillside. Uh, as I said, domestic, it's, it's, it's familiar to the player. It's crowded. It's not, it's not super overpopulated, but there's people milling about. Could be a mountain village or a mountain fort for all we know. And we're suspected of something. So the next thing that you're going to want to do after you have that little scenario, that little basic scenario in your head, you're going to want to pump out your character. And so I have this system that I've made, and I call it 753. And it the each number dictates the highest value of of your three stats. 
So in most RPGs, there's strength, dexterity, uh, uh, defense, uh, spirit, wisdom, intelligence. You know, there's like six, nine, you know, some of them get super complicated because, you know, people really want to know uh, exactly how to build their character. But the way I do it is I like to keep it a little bit simpler because I want to get into the game really fast and I want to go and you know, level up my character and I want to go find some towns and go through some dungeons and, uh, you know, level up, all that kind of stuff. So here's what you do. So if you want to play a, uh, let's say, like a fighting class, a warrior, a pugilist, a, uh, a knight, you would put seven in the strength category, which is strength and defense, okay? The next set of stats is going to be five. And that's going to, for the warrior class, fighter class, that's going to be dexterity and spirit. And then for the final one, three, is going to be wisdom and intelligence together. And they're all combined into one. Uh, strength, dexterity, and intelligence. S-D-I. Please remember, but seven, five, three. If you want to make a, um, you know, a wizard, a mage, a necromancer, pyromancer, summoner, any of those, you would basically flip it. The wisdom and intelligence, intelligence, wisdom, whatever, however you want to say it. If you want to do it yourself, go for it. Uh, you'd put seven in there. And then for uh, the wizard, his spirit in dexterity would be... Uh, five, and then his strength and defense would be three. And then if you have a fast class, you know, uh, rogue, thief, ninja, that kind of thing, archer, uh, you would put strength at, uh, at uh, five, you would put uh, wisdom at three, I believe, and then you'd put dexterity and spirit, dexterity, spirit, you know, as I said, STI is the way I do it. Or SDI. So I'm messing. My, I'm, I'm see. That's that's what's so good about solo RPGs is if you mess something up, you don't have some guy across the table screaming his brains out. You're playing the game wrong. It's okay because you're playing it yourself. So fly by the seat of your pants. It's excellent. But you'd put the the high one. You would basically put in dexterity and spirit. Um, you can swap to the two lowest numbers. Like if you want to give your uh, like your warrior, if you want to give him less dexterity and give him more intelligence, go for it. But there's one thing you do before you complete making your character, all right? You take a d6, all right, and you roll, all right? We rolled a three, okay? So we're going to have 10 for strength. We're going to roll again, four, all right, there we go. We're going to have nine for dexterity. And roll again. Six. So we're going to be ten, nine, nine. That's going to be our starting character. And what's important about that is that's going to be all of our attack rolls in all of our skill checks. Uh, skill checks in attack rolls. What that means is for people who haven't played tabletop RPGs, uh, you usually use your your D twenty and uh, you roll. And depending on which system you use. If you're over the number, it's a success. If you're below, it's uh, not successful. If you're in another system, the system that I use, I use roll under. So with my guy, I said it was a 1099. So if I'm trying to attack an enemy, I'm going to want to roll a 10 or below. And if I roll 11 and up, it's a failure. If it's a 20, it's a critical failure. If it's a 1, it's like a critical hit. Uh, this is, I don't know if another game has used this besides Black Hack, uh, but it's that's the one that I really like. I really like Roll Under. It feels really good because when you level up your, uh, uh, your, your chances are increasing depending on, uh, depending on your role, you know, you, 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 when you level up, you'll gain more, uh, strength. And so you, it increases by, uh, percent, grant, uh, percentages. So, so we have our basic character. So let's just say he's a, a fighter, right? Let's say we have a, a, a guy who, let's say, let's actually, let's take it. Let's take our dice. 
Okay. It's going to be a, a fist fighter, a pugilist, right? So that's what he is. So we have a pugilist. He's in the cold. It's, it's uh, dawn. He is in the hillside, local area. It's crowded. He's suspected. All right. We've, we've now dropped our character into this fiasco. Okay. How uh, stats work when it comes to attacking, I say just, you know, two for a warrior <laughs> to attack, <laughs> you know? So whenever you roll, you know, below, in this case, as I said, he was 10. If you roll below a 10 or below, you do two damage to the opponent. Um, I'll teach you more about enemies and stuff in a minute, but I want to kind of teach you uh, how to kind of go into this situation. So uh, so here we are. We're in this area, and we're being suspected. So right now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my D6, and I'm going to roll, and I'm going to ask a question. Okay. So we're suspected of a crime, or suspect, suspected of something. So here's what we do. Um, are we suspected of a crime? Are we, uh, is it, is it a case of wrong place, wrong time? Or did someone else do something and we're being blamed? Okay. So we're being suspected of a crime. Did we commit the crime? No, we did not commit this crime. So we know we're being falsely accused of something right now as this character. And we need to find a way out of it. Uh, is the, is the area that we're in dangerous? Absolutely. It's absolutely, it's crazy dangerous. <laughs> it's very dangerous right now. Uh, can we, is there a chance we can bargain our way out of this situation? Maybe. We might be able to. So is it, are we in a town, a village, or uh, like a fort, military, military outlet, junket, junction, right? Okay, we're in town. Are the locals friendly? Yeah, they're very friendly. Okay. Um, are the locals aware of our situation? No, they're not. Are we being uh, suspected from an outside force outside of this town? Yes. Yes, we are. Okay, cool. This is working out really well. <laughs> so maybe we're in this town as refuge and we have, uh, you know, sought the safety of it. So how many, how many buildings are in this town? Okay. There's three. So it's really small. Is there a tavern? Yes, there is. There's a tavern. Is there a uh, place of worship? Yes, there's a place of worship. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to, well, it's, it's morning. So let's still, let's go over to the tavern and let's, let's see how that works out. So we, our little dude goes over or big dude, medium dude or dude it, gal, whatever, whatever you want to be, what, whatever. That's what's great about RPG. You role play. So we go into the tavern. Are we welcome in the tavern? No. <laughs> Okay. Um, is the tavern open or closed? It's closed. So it's probably what's going on right now is you've walked into this tavern. There's probably a guy sitting behind, <laughs> standing behind the counter. You know, he's either wiping it or he's spitting in the cups and cleaning them out with his little, you know, dirty, you know, his dirty rag. And... So let's ask this guy, let's ask this, uh, what I'm imagining as a very angry man of us walking in here and we're not welcome. <laughs> so what are we going to ask him? Uh, can I buy a drink? I may not. <laughs> so we may not buy a drink. So, uh, let's try to, let's try to use, cause I said we were, we were 10, nine, nine. All right. Let's try to convince him through a skill check. Let's try to convince the man to give us a drink. All right, so we're going to roll our d20, and we have to roll a nine or under. Four. 
It's not good. It's not good at all. See this? Critical failure. See that 20 right there? Okay. So more than likely, we just got kicked out. We got kicked out in the cold. Is it still, let's see, is it still dawn? Nah. Sun is rising. So we got kicked out. It's probably warming up a little bit. So let's go to this house of worship, all right? So we enter the house of worship. Are there a lot of people there? Yeah, there's a lot. So what you can surmise from that is that maybe maybe it's a it's a day of worship or a day of offering or penance in this area and that's why the the tavern was closed or that's why the the guy was treating you the barkeeper whoever he was was some random guy walked in off the street is mad <laughs> it kicked you out of the place right so this is a really these oracle systems are great for creating a really 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 cool really quick setting theme and you just plop your character right into it super easy so you know and then you can kind of push the story in different directions like you want it to you know say you say you want to go in a dungeon right so you go up into the 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 house of worship the church or whatever it is the place where they bring offerings a temple and uh is there anybody willing to talk there? Not really. Maybe they're, you know. So let's wait a little bit. Let's wait. Let's go outside. Let's look around the town. That's when you'll roll and say, you know, is the place made of stone? No. Is it lots of wood? Yes, absolutely. And so you kind of build a picture. And then you go back in and say, is there anybody willing to talk yet? And there we go. They're ready to talk. Someone's ready to talk. Service is over. Offerings have been given. Incense has been burned. Whatever. Whatever little fantasia you create within your mind is what has happened. So, let's say, are there any, you know, dark secrets about this area? Yes, there are. You know? <laughs> yes. And then that gives you a mode and a motion to move into either an exploration phase or whatever. And so I have right here a very poorly drawn, but it's perfect for this, a dungeon hallway. And so I have right here, shock. <laughs> and what I would do is, uh, depending on the area, that you're in, as I said, we're in a hillside. Um, the climate seems to be, you know, cold, cool. So you'd kind of want to match the creatures to that area. So let's just go ahead and use an old, just an old faithful. We're going to have a, like, blob guy, all right, a slime. And let's just draw him really quick. Let's draw some weird gnarly teeth on the guy. You know, make them look kind of creepy. We have an eyeball over here looking that way. And then maybe an eyeball over here looking up in the air. All right, let's give them a little bit of personality. Some shine. Okay. Perfect. All right, and so let's say the dude has... Let's see, he has uh, like four hit points all right and he has mm, like if you beat him you get two gold and after you defeat him you also get one experience point all right so so you got your dungeon right and then there you go you're fighting now you're in the dungeon Things are falling over because it's awesome. <laughs> See, it's just like it's just like in a, it's just like in your video games, in your uh, first-person dungeon crawlers. I didn't think this through too well, <laughs> but anyway, so you got your enemy shown up, and you know the battle theme kicks on in your head, and so as I said, he has four hit points, 
And, uh, oh, I didn't, show, you know, see, this is, that's, and that's the thing about flying by the seat of your pants. I didn't write down how much damage he does. So let's just, for the sake, for the sake of this, <laughs> let's say he causes, uh, let's, he causes two damage, okay? So we have, uh, we have this guy right here. And that's another thing. See, I'm, I'm just going, I'm going all crazy because I'm all worried about the scenario. <laughs> Uh, another thing with your character when creating your character, hit points and stuff. I'm, I'm serious about this. Do what you want. Don't don't you know start off and say, oh, I get myself one million hit points. I got you know one thousand strength. I destroy everything. But that's what you want to do. That's fine if you want to like you know portray the ultimate power fantasy um, or the ultimate wizard fantasy. Go for it. Actually, why not? It's your story. It's your it's your RPG. It's your solo RPG. Why not? But. What I do is I'll say, okay, you get, you get 10 hit points. You do, like if you're a warrior, two damage, right? And you have one defense. So like, as I said, this guy does two damage. If we successfully roll against his attack, a defense, right? We would take one damage. But here's how this would work. So this guy attacks us. It's a surprise attack, all right? So we have 10, 9, 9. Those were our stats. So let's try to defend against this guy. So we take our D20 and we roll. We got a two. Look at that, that's right there, let's see. We got a two. So we defended against this, but we still take one damage. Remember that, because we only have one defense and the defense and the damage, you know, always counteract each other. So our hit points, as I said, I think I said 10, so now we have nine. So we're gonna we're gonna take our attack, and I said we have two strength against this guy. So let's go ahead and take on Mr. Weird Tooth Slime Guy, all right? And so I have to roll a 10 or under to be able to attack this guy successfully. Roll a three. Let's see if I can show you that correctly. No, see, it's like I'm showing you 17, three. So he would take two damage, and what you would do on your uh, notepad or whatever your graph paper you would you know erase their hit points and write in two and like this situation i would you know take this you know more than likely i'd use a then uh, i'm going to write left-handed and that see look it won't even write so we go take it back that'll be easy and then we're going to write two there we go he has two hit points left perfect and so he's going to attack again and we're going to try to defend this time or we're going to try let's try to actually let's try to dodge his attack and so we would use our dexterity as a skill check so if we roll a nine or under we'll completely dodge the attack and mitigate all damage so critical failures. so critical failures typically means that the enemy does a critical attack so we would take uh, probably three or four damage. We'd really get walloped by that. So let's say let's go ahead and say it's double damage. All right. So we have we have five hit points left as our newly created warrior. So we're gonna attack him. Got a roll under eleven. So ten or under. It's our strength. Seventeen. Oh, we whiff. We miss. Oh, this guy. Slime guy. See, slime guy. Don't ever underestimate slime guy. All right, now we're going to roll. He's going to attack us again. And let's try Let's try to block again. Let's use our strength because it's our higher number. We may have four, but there's a chance next turn we can wipe him out. 16. Oh, we take two more damage. We have three hit points left. All right, so let's go ahead and attack him. Ten or under. Ten. Right on the money. There we go. And fanfare plays, you get your gold, you get your experience. And depending on how you set yourself up, hopefully for success, uh, however you set yourself up, you are well on your way to gaining a level at this point. So it's, as I said earlier in the video, this is about creating your own world, creating your own setting, building on top of each other. If your first one doesn't work out like you wanted it to, start a new one. Start it because then, after you start the second one, you'll see the strings. And you'll start to see uh, 
Well, I did this last time, so maybe I'll do it a little bit different this time. Maybe I'll ask questions differently. Maybe I'll ask questions in a positive light. Maybe I'll ask them in a negative light, depending on how I want things to happen. And so you'll learn to color your questions a certain way. Uh, and you will be able to kind of push this randomly generated story that you have created. That's the biggest part about it. You're doing it all yourself. And just a couple dice, some paper. It's awesome. <laughs> I really recommend everybody check it out. Maybe I can get like this, this set up all here. I've got, I have Machikoro and Unearth down here under this. And I have Onitama a Sega Genesis game back here behind this thing, this this chalkboard. So maybe I can get a setup that will benefit me and I can go through some action, start doing some campaigns and showing you how it works with, you know, totally original characters and uh, show you how you meet other people, how, how just the game, as I said, how the game will divert and flow and change constantly as you are creating the world and creating the narrative, creating the setting, creating the characters. And it's just all from the top of your head. And it's really fun. I, I, uh, I really want people to get into solo RPGs because they're very, they're very fulfilling. They're very creatively fulfilling and they, they work well for storytelling as well. But the time has come. We were open before, but now we're closed. Beat it.